Good morning, church. I should have mowed the yard yesterday, but I didn't. Today, I want to take you to Luke chapter 17. We're going to look at a pretty famous miracle story. Verse 11. It says, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Now, there are a lot of times when Jesus heals people with leprosy, and quite frequently he goes up to them and he touches them, which was countercultural, of course, because leprosy was a contagious disease. In fact, I'm kind of thinking about life in quarantine right now and how I kind of want to avoid all the people who might give me this contagious disease, and I want to avoid all the people in case I have the, the contagious disease. I don't want to give it to them. But nonetheless, Jesus many times just will touch a leper and heal him. Now, if you have the power of healing in your hands, then of course, I guess you can do such things. But one of the things that amazes me about this story is that Jesus' response is a little bit different. There are 10 men. And so he yells to them. Verse 14, when he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. Now, what Jesus says there is... uh, based on an Old Testament command. The Old Testament command was, if you have leprosy, the only way you can possibly get back into society is if you prove that you're cleansed by going to the priests. You go to the priests, you say, priest, do I have leprosy? They examine you according to the Old Testament guidelines, and then they declare whether you have leprosy or not. And if you don't have leprosy, you can return to the community. And so Jesus says to these guys, go prove to the priests that you don't have leprosy. Or maybe in our modern world, it's kind of like saying, go get a second opinion. Anyway, it says, as they went, they were cleansed. This is one of those moments of faith where Jesus doesn't say, you are healed. What he says is, prove that you're healed by going and talking to the priests. They go in faith, and as they go, they're cleansed. Now, what the meaning of this story boils down to a question of did they realize they were cleansed after they spoke to the priests or did they realize they were cleansed as they were walking to the priest? I think Luke is trying to make the point that they realized they were cleansed on the way to the priest. As they went, they were cleansed. My guess is that they realized it Two, it's not just that it happened as they were walking, but they realized it too. That's important because what happens next, verse 15, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Now, there are a lot of things going on here. The first thing is that he realizes he was healed. And he doesn't continue on to the priest. His job would be to go to the priest, have the priest prove that he's really healed. But he doesn't even bother finishing with that rule. Instead, he just realizes he's healed and he runs backwards to Jesus. The second thing of note is that he's a Samaritan. Now, why is that significant? Well, it's significant in a couple of ways. Number one, Jews hated Samaritans. They thought of them as dirty people. And so if the Samaritan is the one who's doing the right thing, so to speak, by going back and thanking Jesus, then the Samaritan, the bad guy in the story, is actually the hero of the story. That's one of the things that always seems to shake up Jesus' hearers. But there's another reason, too. You see, the Samaritans didn't have any sort of loyalty to the Jerusalem priesthood. Samaritans had their own set of priests, but they didn't have much of a loyalty to them either. And so when this Samaritan sees that he's healed, there's only one real loyalty he has, the man who healed him. See, the other guys, if they were Jewish, they would see they were healed and they would realize their job, their responsibility under the law is to go to the priests and finish this job, finish this rule, get the priests to declare that they're clean. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what good Jewish people would do. But the Samaritan, he's an outsider. 
He doesn't have loyalty to the Jewish religious system. He doesn't have loyalty to the Jewish priesthood. He doesn't have loyalty to the Jewish Old Testament principles and laws because Samaritans have a different way of interpreting all those things. It's one of the reasons the Jews hated Samaritans. But Jesus looks at him, verse 17. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Jesus gives the Samaritan two commands. The first command was to go to the priests. He doesn't finish obeying that command. Instead, he comes back. And Jesus' second command is not, Okay, so go back and finish this command of checking it out with the priests. No, Jesus' second command is rise and go. Your faith has made you well. See, what I see in this passage is that quite often this passage is used to teach people that they're supposed to be thankful. Quite often this passage is used to try to say, okay, you're supposed to be thankful when God does something good for you. But I want to look at it a little bit different. Because you see, this man was a foreigner, and it was, it was his very nature as a foreigner that made him do the right thing. It was his nature as a foreigner that made him go back and realize his only loyalty was to Jesus. Some of you were raised in the church. And you're feeling like your loyalty is to the church. Your loyalty is to a Sunday morning experience. Your loyalty is to a particular expression of the faith. And during this time of lockdown, quarantine, whatever it is, you're kind of wondering what that's all about. What does it mean to be a part of a church? What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus if you don't have a place to go to? Let me just remind you, your loyalty doesn't need to be to the priesthood or the rituals or the traditions. Your loyalty should be to the one who healed you. Have you experienced the healing that only Jesus can bring? Have you experienced forgiveness of your sins? Have you experienced the joy of the promise of eternal life? If you have, then stay close. Remain loyal to the one who saved you. Make that be the top of your list so that Jesus could look at you and say, has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? You and I are the foreigners. We're the ones who have the privilege of realizing that we don't have a bondage to the Old Testament law. Instead, we have a bondage to the one who saved us. Let's remember that. Let me pray for you. Lord, we ask that you would help us to be more grateful to you, And we pray that you would do it as we uh, find our loyalty strongly tied to Jesus, the one who saved us. Lord God, thank you for giving us this day. Help us to represent, represent you well, no matter where we are. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. God bless you.